Uh, so quick question, has anyone here ever read the Bible? All right, a couple people maybe? All right, good. Um, maybe you have a favorite character in the Bible? Um, well, mine is this guy, Joseph. Why? So Joseph rolls into Cairo and the Pharaoh's having bad dreams. And Joseph says to Pharaoh, sir, I know why you're having these bad dreams. It's because you're anxious. And you're anxious because the one thing that your kingdom, that your civilization depends on is the River Nile. And you are completely uncertain about the future of the Nile. Will it be a great year with bumper crops? Will it be a drought and a famine? You just don't know, but I can help because I can give you a prediction that the next seven years will be very good with good harvests, then seven years of drought after that. If you plan now for the drought ahead, you'll be fine. And this is exactly what happened. Joseph made a 14-year deterministic hydrometeorological prediction, and he nailed it. <laughs> and this, I mean, so I work in this kind of thing, right? And, and this is the gold standard of our business. <laughs> and I actually work, I work kind of in the same wing of the department as, as Joseph did, because I'm working on climate and water variability, actually in the Nile right now. And it's a very anxious place, it's still today. And we see that in things like the fact that Egypt has had an engineer stationed in Uganda, 1,500 miles south of their border, for the past 60 years, just to make sure that no one messes with the water flowing out of Lake Victoria. We see it in South Sudan, where there are ongoing discussions about draining one of the greatest wetlands in the world simply to increase the flow downstream by a few percent. We see it in Egypt in, uh, at, the, at Lake Nasser, which runs at twice its design capacity all the time to provide Egypt with a slightly larger buffer against the anxiety of water insecurity. And we saw it last year when Ethiopia announced they were going to build the largest hydropower dam in the history of the Nile the day after Hosni Mubarak fell from power. Mubarak had always sworn that he would bomb the dam the second Ethiopia started construction. And all this feels very ancient somehow. It feels, it feels like we have this anxiety of uncertainty, and we have tribes competing against each other, holding their data close together, and shying away from collaboration because the uncertainty makes them anxious. And people like me on my team, what we do is we try to say it's not ancient times anymore. We can use things like satellite analysis of precipitation patterns, pair that with tools we've developed to do satellite analysis of water storage, of evaporation, put that into models that can be used to simulate the impacts of various irrigation schemes development on the basin, bring that information to different countries, and start a conversation that reduces uncertainty and allows for collaboration. And we've been doing this and we've seen positive effects. We've seen that people are talking more together about how to optimize development in the Nile that benefits the whole region. And so naturally they came to us and said, okay, well there's a big new issue here which is climate change. And this is causing anxiety, there's a lot of uncertainty, so um, what's going to happen? How will this change everything we've discussed? And so I said, well the shorter answer is, I have absolutely no idea. Um, and this is anxiety producing. Um, and it's anxiety producing in the Nile. It's anxiety producing everywhere. I think that one of the reasons we have trouble speaking rationally about climate change is because we are anxious at the fact that there is no perfect prediction that is allowing us to act with certainty. Um, and I could give you a bunch of slides with complex risk analysis profiles. We know something, right? But we don't know what you want, which is a perfect prediction so that you can act. And I think that the problem here is that I have a Joseph complex that I'm trying to give a perfect prediction, and people everywhere think that they can wait for a perfect prediction before they take actions. And in working in the Nile, we're beginning to think that, well, maybe that prediction will always be out there. We're always going to aim for it, but we'll never achieve it. And in the meantime, we've understood a lot. We've understood, for example, that water withdrawn upstream of Lake Victoria has virtually no impact on the amount of water that flows into Egypt. We've learned that the wetlands of South Sudan have an important buffering influence that has an ecological system that is resilient and therefore can help stability with its neighbors. We've also learned how there can be interplay between water management and the White Nile, which runs through the wetlands, and the Blue Nile, where Ethiopia is building this dam, such that maybe through collaboration, we can find a way to ensure water security downstream while building a regional economy and energy trade that supports investment in the highlands and the subsistence farmers of Ethiopia to improve food security there, which makes for a stronger relationship with Egypt, and then Egypt can invest in the basin, and you have all of these interconnections that build upon each other. And really, this, in our studies, what we try to do is to quantify these things, to demonstrate them, to understand them better, so that we can say that, well, in a changing climate and the total absence of a perfect forecast, can we use this kind of information to move from the anxiety of interdependence to a network of resilience. Thank you. 
Thank you. Fantastic.